happy Friday. It is the first day of the weekend and I'm super excited. And I real quick before I introduce my guest, I did want to give a shout out to Peyton from the Junior Board of Directors. Hank Priam uh, made a post before the show started and said that she's going to be watching. And if your sister's with you, Aiden, hi. Hi, ladies. Thank you for joining us today. Um, but I want to introduce to our guest today. It's Kate. She is the Director for Workforce Development at the Association for Packaging and Processing Technologies, or the PMMI. They are responsible for the PAC Expo show that's coming up. So we'll be talking about that later on in the conversation. But I do want Kate to have the opportunity to say hello and just introduce yourself and let us know how you got involved with this crazy world of engineering and manufacturing. Sure. Thanks, Megan. I appreciate you having me on the show today. Um, as Megan said, I work for PMMI and I'm the director of workforce development. That includes not only working with the current workforce to get them upskilled because we know that the world of manufacturing is constantly changing, but okay. also really building the pipeline, um, getting the future generation interested in manufacturing specifically for PMMI packaging and processing. Um, and it's it's been a roller coaster. Um, definitely a lot has changed from when I started at the company six years ago. And mm -hmm. I'm constantly learning. As far as how I got involved, it literally fell in my lap, Megan. Um, I had no idea about the world of manufacturing. I went to school for international business. I moved okay. up to the DC area. And um, for those of you who don't know, PMI, we're located in Northern Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C., and um, it's the land of associations. Uh, just, I didn't it, know that. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's here. Um, it just fell in my lap. And I started six years ago, and I couldn't imagine doing anything else like this. It's even though I'm not working in a manufacturing plant, the students that I interact with, the employees that I interact with, the companies, like everybody, it's just a great industry to be a part of. Mm -hmm. You said that you were getting involved with international business. So what was your dream job with that? Because I think one of the problems that we have here in the United States, and this might be a global issue too, but we have all of these degree titles and no one really knows what the job or career pathways are for those degree titles. So mine was professional and technical writing. I had no idea that tech writing was even a thing. I knew it as just writing, but I hear that all the time too. We're like, you know, they have courses in high school that are called CNC machining. And if you're not in engineering or manufacturing, you're not going to know what that CNC stands for. So what was your like dream job? What did you think you were going to do before this fell into your lap? I had no idea. Um, okay. All I know, I have I have a passion for travel. I love to travel. And in high school, I took German. I, I could not speak. I can converse very minimally. Um, but being introduced into manufacturing, it is a global market. It, it's a global mm -hmm. industry. And um, it eventually it, it does allow people to travel. I mean, even from the technicians yeah. traveling across the country to different plants, but also um, I know we have our show in Vegas. We have a lot of international companies. Um, we have an international pavilion. So it's definitely, um, I'm maybe kind of getting more into international business at this point. <laughs> no, that's good though, you know? So um, with the workforce development stuff, what is, what are, what is your organization? specifically doing to help kind of solve that problem because that is going to be that's a global issue as well too like everybody is struggling to find skilled talent and we're trying to come up with different ways on how to expose the next generation and you know there's talks going on where we have to not just focus like you said on the next generation but we also have the current generation who we need to help upskill but then we also have conversations around let's start before high school and get them exposed in elementary and middle school. So what are the specific things that PMMI are doing to really get communities connected with the manufacturing companies within their areas? Absolutely. I do want to just kind of introduce PMMI a little bit because we might have some yeah. listeners who are unfamiliar with what the acronym is. Um, so we're actually the Association for Packaging and Processing Technologies. And we're essentially a trade show organization comprised of original equipment manufacturers across North America. 
We have okay. over a thousand members represented in Canada, the US and Mexico. So we, even though we are located as a headquarters in Northern Virginia, we do have access across North America. So that's that's one thing that we do. We're kind of the, the global resource for that industry and uniting the industry throughout the whole material and supply chain. So that being said, we have a lot of initiatives that we work on, mm -hmm. specifically have a future workforce committee, which I would be amiss if I did not mention them. They're a fantastic group of individuals comprised of our members. And they come up with fantastic ideas of how we can engage the future workforce, what we can do um, to get our members involved. So um, where should I start? Let's see. Um, first and foremost, we have a website. Um, it's our career toolkit. So this is open for members as well as educators and students. It has everything from an internship how-to guide for company support, how to um, successfully run a, a career fair. So, you know, some marketing collateral for that. And then we have some promotional videos um, that address the industry and how innovative and exciting the career pathways can be. So mm -hmm. that would be a really good resource for um, students to view. So we have our, our career toolkit. Along with that, we do have a website dedicated to the different types of jobs in the industry. So all of this is just kind of, um, you know, very high level, you know, if people Google jobs within the industry, they could come across that. Um, mm -hmm. As far, far as more like regional efforts, I know that we um, brought you in with our workforce alliance groups. We have mm -hmm. compiled several workforce alliance groups across the country. And what that is, it's just a, it's several of our members. The group can be anywhere from five to 15 plus members that are concentrated in specific area. So I had Megan join me for our future Packers group that is located in Southeast Wisconsin. And um, it's really about sharing best practices about what can I do as an employer um, and coming together as a cohort and going to these schools, you know, local community schools, four-year universities and saying, these are the, the tools and skills we're looking for for our students um, and and we need we need to hire those. So you need to be sharing these skills with your students and, and how can they support the schools? I know in some of those groups, we are doing a combined effort for manufacturing day, um, kind mm -hmm. of getting everybody together and, and promoting it as a whole versus just individual one-offs. Um, and I'm sure everybody on here knows what Manufacturing Day is. Um, the first if, you, <laughs> yeah, if you don't, it's the first Friday of October. But I think now we're trying to just get the whole month of October dedicated. To I know, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're doing that. So there's a lot of grassroots issue, uh, initiatives that we are doing. Um, we also, I know you had Antigone on last week talking about yeah. the Nets, Bolts, and Thingamajigs camps. We actually partner with them. So we do support and sponsor their camps. Um, That's and, cool. Yeah, I, I love I love what they did. And when we met with them, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We just wanted to partner and help them expand. And um, the only th we promote it to our members so they can promote it to schools in their area. And we've seen, I mean, that that program has grown immensely in the last couple yeah. of years. And so. she's such a fire. I love Antigone. She's just so blunt and honest. And like, this is where we've been doing it wrong for years. We got to change it. And this is how we can do it. And she's just so matter of the fact. That was such a fun conversation I had with her. Last and I thought week it was Sunday. interesting. She said that because when we started doing this back in 2019 is when we decided to partner with them, we went to her camp. Like I remember we like, we went to her camp to kind of see what they were doing. And I was blown away with the way that it was run. So I could only imagine yeah. what they, they are now. She, she does a really good job. And it's just, I, I like how you said too, where you're partnering up with different groups and not trying to silo it out either. And I think that's one of the main things that all of us have to focus on. Right. And Antigone said this, and she says it all the time, it's going to take a village. So we have to stop trying to solve these issues 
by our groups and organizations. There are so many manufacturing and engineering and now like additive manufacturing and technology, like specific niche groups and organizations. But that doesn't mean we d we have to like have that line in the sand. There's are certain days that we can come together and create larger events together as organizations. So I thought that was a really good point that you made. So anybody that's interested, like how can, yeah, okay, so we have nuts, bolts and thinking, how can we get not just the PMI involved, but maybe the FMA, maybe the TMA, maybe all the groups that are in Wisconsin, Illinois, how can we come together and make a bigger event that can get more kids involved? So I think that's a really cool idea. Um, you did mention like uh, something about career fairs and I had a question about that. So what are some of the tips that you can provide people to have a successful career fair? Because the career fairs that I remember going to were really boring and I didn't <laughs> like going to them. So what are some of the tips that you're providing people to help make a successful career fair? Because I just can't get the picture out of my head of like, oh, you have a bunch of tables, maybe one or two people at each table and then brochures. Right. Which... Yeah, I agree. And I do want to preface, I I think career fairs are great, but you've got to get in with the schools outside of just a career fair. I, I definitely think that um, that's kind of your way into a school. But once you make that connection, you, you've got to start um, being more engaged and active with the schools from, from a company standpoint. But you got to have something that's going to engage the students. Like, yeah. um, you know, if you have like a tabletop machine that you can bring and just put it on your table and show them what it does and explain hey, this, this is what I'm looking for someone to do. I am looking for someone to help troubleshoot this or build this or come up with new ideas on how to make this more effective. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you're right, like brochures are not going to show anything. I mean, you can have like banners and, you know, um, a TV, but that's not going to engage the students. Um, one thing, I was actually at a, a big career event in J June and somebody had a, a prize wheel. So like, if you want to come up, like have a prize wheel and you know, it's either they have to answer a question um, about your company or, you know, they get, they get a prize, like whatever. It, it just encourages the engagement. And I think a lot of kids just, you know, walk by and pick up our brochure and don't even talk to the individuals sitting mm -hmm. behind the table. But if you have right. that kind of interaction with them, whether it be a simple spin wheel or um, like a, a small tabletop machine, that engagement is huge. Or if you have something like if you're in robotics and you have one of those tablets that you can use to program the actual robot, maybe you have something like that. Because I've seen small ones. I don't know what the costs are to like get it to move, but I'm just thinking outside the box. I went to a Rockwell automation fair event and they actually had a roller coaster set up and it was actually, it was made by one of their uh, former interns wow. and he like built it in his dorm room and he programmed it and it shows like all of the maintenance points on the track and on the roller coaster. So if something starts to fail or gets loose or something, they have all of that data. And I'm like, how much does this cost for you to bring it to like a school at my community? And he was like, you know, I've never been asked that question before. And he was like, it takes a lot to move it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not cheap. And then you have to pay for gas. So I was like, ah, oh, this would be so awesome mm -hmm. for kids to see how roller coasters are built because it's pretty much the same technology. It's just on a smaller scale. Another thing is, is I was at Automate and I came across like two or three booths that had Legos and they had small Lego packets of like their automation components and stuff. So like they actually had a small machine that you could build out of a Lego set. I think that's and I so thought it was cool. the coolest thing ever. <laughs> like I who doesn't know. like Legos? <laughs> the bright and shiny objects. <laughs> that's and then I, I got in trouble because I had one brand with me and another brand's booth. And the VP was there and he goes, what the hell are you doing with that in here? And I was like, like, I'm not thinking about this. Like, I just brought it in here. And he goes, that's actually a really good idea. 
shit, that's a really good idea. <laughs> and I was like, well, where's your Lego? Like, you got to bring it to the next show. So it was just funny to see that that interaction between the two companies. I do want to get to some of the comments because we do have a question that came through. Okay. Um, if it comes up. Juan was asking, um, can your organization help? Because he's looking for suppliers and machine components within the region. Juan, where are you coming in from? Can you give us a hint on what region you're in? Because you could, if you're in North America, they might have different representatives for each country. So where are you coming in from? Let us know that. We also have Danny here. Hi, Danny. Thank you. And then we have Liz. Ooh, you're near me. Greetings from MD. She's awesome. You should connect oh, hey, with Liz. Her. <laughs> and then we have Penny, um, Penny at TCI Coding. Hi. And then we have Dan. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. If you have a question for Kate, feel free to drop it in and um, we, we can ask that. So I don't know where Juan is, but um, how can he get more information wherever he's from in the region? Should he just go to the PMMI website? You, you can go to the PMMI website. We also have a member directory. So that's going to um, be searchable by what type of machine components or equipment you're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll just tell you what it, it's prosource.org. Should I type that in the chat? Can I do that? I can do it. What is it? Prosource. So P-R-O-S-O-U-R-C-E dot org. Okay. That will be able to, um, perfect. Yep. That you can find anything. And then also I, I'm more than happy to share my contact information. We'll and, get to that at the end. Yeah. So <laughs> you, anything that we talk about, you guys are more than welcome to reach out to me directly and I will definitely get you to the right place. Oh, Heather. Thanks. I saw Heather. Heather to the right. <laughs> thanks Heather. Appreciate thanks, your help. Heather. <laughs> um, and Dan said, you're talking about the Lego from our automate, aren't you? Yes, I'm not gonna say which companies though, because I don't want to start anything. Because it was pretty funny. It's it's two companies that are obviously competitors of one another, and I wasn't thinking and brought one into there. But then Danny said, "This is what I teach my two boys in college: taking up mechanical engineering. We need your ideas. You're the future. How creates better informative ideas? I do wish in MT younger years someone would have sure wish that too. So then. What are some of the things that, you know, companies like any members of yours are coming to you? Like, what are some of the main issues they're they're coming across when trying to attract the next generation? Because I know that we have the issue with um, current generations and getting them upskilled and everything. But we do have the next generation. And I've been hearing things where like, oh, they're lazy. They don't want to work. Everybody wants to be an influencer. Just want to spend time on their phone. But I've talked to kids and I don't 100% agree with that. Yeah, you have people that want to do different things, but there are kids who are interested in this this place. But one, they just don't know what's available. Two, they might not see themselves within the sector. So what are some of the things that you're hearing when you're you know, amongst the PMMI group and you're having these conversations about workforce development and, and getting the next generation recruited into it? I'm hearing a lot of the same things you are. And I do think after speaking with students and here, we have to, we just have to get more interested in the industry. I, I do unfortunately hear that there's, they don't have, a lot of companies don't have the, the smaller mom and pop companies don't really have the designated HR and recruitment staff to be able to to really put the effort in. And I think this goes back to a video you posted maybe last night or reposted about um, what, what are companies doing to get back to their community and how are they actually engaging and sharing these jobs and letting students know what's out there. And I think there has mm -hmm. to be more of an emphasis on, on making the time. And that's one thing that PMI is trying to do to support our members is creating these alliances, creating these videos, bringing students to PAC Expo. Um, we're trying to do all of this to promote the awareness of the industry because it's a massive industry, um, specifically packaging. I mean, everywhere you look, the grocery store, everything has touched packaging. And I, I don't think students really understand that. I was at this, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Skills USA, but they had their national mm -hmm. conference um, back in June. 
and we had a booth there. So we were there promoting the packaging and processing industries. And even though uh, we were looking to talk more with students who were in mechatronics or electrical engineering, I we, we happened to be right by the like cosmetology competition. So many of those students came up and were like, what? what is this? And we would have, we had a display case of all the different types of packaging and the innovative packaging. And they were just awestruck because one of my favorite things now is going through the store and like finding unique packaging. So we tried to, to pull that out. Like, um, for example, dry shampoo normally comes in like a air spray container and it's like a, like a hairspray type thing. Well, I found one that was like a pump and it was powder and they were like, we've never seen that before. That is so cool. And you don't even have to really want to be interested in, in engineering to appreciate the industry. But yeah. when you, when you learn to appreciate the industry, then you start researching more of what opportunities there are available. And I think that's kind of the first step is yeah. letting people know this is, you know, this is a niche industry and it's all around you and it's it's a massive worldwide thing. Well, that, that's leading into my next question for you. So what are some of the packaging and processing technologies and career paths that make it an exciting place to do for a career? So there are so many different types of career paths you can go into. I mean, outside of just you have field service, you have technicians, mechanics, um, you can even have application, I mean, application engineers, design engineers, packaging engineers. Um, one thing that, that I think is really great is there's a place for everyone. So um, there's automation. There is, um, we're looking to design new packages that are more sustainable, biodegradable. Um, we have robotics. So if you're environmentally friendly and that's something you want to go into, packaging could be a great opportunity for you. Um, they have the, what are like straws that the paper, yeah. straw, you know, paper straws are kind of a new thing. They have biodegradable um, like can holders for mm -hmm. like a case of beer or Coke. Um, you know, it's just, it's so cool. And then you also see in California, there's a, I don't know what restaurant chain it is, but they have robots slipping hamburgers now. Like I've heard about it. I don't know which one it is. Yeah, yeah I don't know is. what it is, but they, that's their job. You have to hire someone, by the way, at a higher rate than someone who's slipping hamburgers, who knows how to fix that machine, who knows how to trouble that, shoot that machine. So there, it's just, it's so cool. And the innovation that we're seeing and yeah the ideas and creativity that students can have. Yeah, well, and I think one of the things you brought up too is sustainability. When I talked to some students at IMTS a couple years ago, they all brought up sustainability as something that was a passion of theirs. So like they are interested in how we're getting rid of things and how we're being wasteful. So they wanna be part of the solution to cut back on some of that waste or, you know, like cleaning out the oceans and making things greener and i just thought it was really cool that that's what they were looking for and i think packaging is a place for that to kind of fulfill that passion because they i i think i read one article too where they were talking about like edible packaging where like you could actually eat that too which i don't know how that would taste i don't but... i don't know about that <laughs> From, per, from a personal standpoint, I, yeah. I, I immediately thought of like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory because right. he eats that teacup. And I was like, I still don't know if I would want to do that. But I think all of the biodegradable materials that they're creating to help. Um, and then those paper straws, too. I just I don't know. Those get kind of soggy, but there, there's a problem that someone could solve, I think. So, Absolutely. yeah, I. I think it's great. Uh, Danny's been commenting. He said, I wish in my younger years someone had supported my ideas as being in the trade. Some people just don't know about it. They sure don't, especially in the inner cities. That's why I try my best to refer the people to the training facilities for the training. Some go, some don't, but I'm always advocating for the training. I think that's one of the, another issue that we got to solve um, that he brings up is we have to find a way to get into the inner cities more too, because depending on where you're at, location wise your budget's going to vary right and right. some schools have a higher budget than other schools i just talked to a, an instructor from a community college 
And he was like, I really appreciate you um, highlighting my students because they're not used to people caring about what they're doing. It's the other school next to us that gets all the funding and the attention. I'm like, well, that's got to change. So how do we balance it out? And I know that's going to be a difficult one. And maybe maybe you have some insight on that because, you know, right now we're seeing a lot of legislation involvement with manufacturing um, initiatives. And I was just wondering how the PMI kind of, because you're in Washington, D.C., so you're right there by the White House and where they make a lot of the major decisions. How does the PMMI like involve itself with some of those legislative initi- initiatives? What what sort of things are you doing to to get involved with that? So PMMI is a member of NAM, the okay. or the, the yeah um, the National Association of Manufacturers, and they're really the ones who do a lot of the lobbying. Um, and gotcha. I think that's great because they their members are the associations, right? So instead of PMMI mm-hmm. going or FMA going to legislation they have all of us as a consortium and the support behind them so so that's really what we do um, on that front one thing because you're right you know it's the resources provided to schools vary so drastically and um one thing that pmi recently launched we have a what we call pmi use skills fund grant so okay. we um, we work with our members because once again, I mean, we, we really want our members to get engaged with the school so they can build their pipeline. So any member that donates equipment or provides financial support to um, work on a, a program or a summer camp or whatever, regardless of the resources, um, PMMI will then match that money or That's equipment cool. donation up to $50,000. So we're we're wanting to expand that and make sure that we are getting to all the different schools. And that's one way that, you know, PMI, we are a resource to be able to have schools come to us and say, hey, I'm looking for some support. Um, do you have any members in our area? And we can try and connect them and, and see how we can start building that relationship. But on the flip side, our members can say, you know, what schools do you know of? So we're kind of working at it from from both angles. And we do want to be very um, aware of those resource restrictions. So that's why we don't have, it's literally a blank slate, like whoever wants this and whatever member is going to help, we're willing to support that. That's really cool. Well, another thing I wanted to talk about was PAC Expo because um, Danny keeps commenting. He says, see Baltimore and Chicago. Yeah, I've been to the one in Chicago, Danny. It's a cool, cool place to be there. They're doing a lot of good things in Chicago. I didn't know they had one in Baltimore or those other places. That's Thank you for sharing that information. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was PAC Expo because that's right around the corner and it's in Vegas this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it alternates between Vegas and Chicago. Is there one other city? So that's- there are actually going to be two cities now. So oh. um on the odd years, we do Vegas. Um, mm-hmm. Starting in 25, we will be having a south a southeast show that will be in Atlanta. So on all odd years, we're going to have an Atlanta show and our Vegas show. And then on the even years, we have our PAC Expo East, which is in Philadelphia, and then we have International. So we have those. Uh, plus, we have um, we have a show in Mexico every year as well that alternates locations. Is that called Expo Pack? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, this one, it, it looks the same. Brand name <laughs> color. Um, so what are some of the things that attendees and exhibitors can expect this year? Because I know that you have one thing going on that involves students. So I really want to talk about that. But what 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 are you looking forward to at the Pack Expo show? And then what are some of the atten- things attendees? So I'll focus on what the attendees are probably more interested in. And then I'll talk about what I'm doing because <laughs> Because that involves the student stuff. Um, But yeah, so I'm really excited to announce that we have a massive show. Um, It's, I got to get my notes from my trade show uh, side of things. We're nearly a million square feet um, of space. So that is a massive show for Vegas. Um, Huge. Yeah, we're expecting about 30,000 attendees from 40 different vertical markets. And there will be about 2,000 exhibitors that they can can walk by in their booths. So I'm really excited about the growth of this show. Um, some highlights that I think 
um, are really important to stop by and see. We will have a sustainability center this year that's going to highlight new and um, new sustainability innovations. Um, so that's going to be something that I highly recommend everybody stopping at. We will have because um, one of our, one thing that we are trying to do is not only get more the next generation in, mm -hmm. um, but attract women into the industry. I mean that we have this massive skills gap, and if we were to hire, you know, we could we could fill that with women if if we really wanted to. So getting women in, involved in manufacturing. So we have our PPWLN breakfast, and that stands for our packaging and processing women's leadership network. Um, that's something that Pima my hosts. It's open to any anyone who wants to attend. Um, it's going to be Tuesday morning at the show, and the um, guest speaker, her name's Manjit Minhas, and at the age of 19, she co-founded Minhas Breweries, Distilleries, and Wineries. So I think it's going to be a fantastic um, keynote from her. So that's going to be Tuesday morning. Um, I'm doing these out of order now that I think about it. We always support, PMMI has a foundation, and that's really where a lot of our future workforce initiatives come out of. We have mm -hmm. what's called Pat Gives Back, which is typically a concert, a comedy, um, something along the lines of that. But since our show is so big this year, we are going to um, bring all of our attendees for those tickets to O, the Cirque du Soleil show. So that's going to be um, anybody who buys tickets for that, those proceeds are going to go to the PMI Foundation to help support the future workforce initiatives that we have going on. Um, and that's Sunday night. So th those are really some highlights that I think um, attendees really look forward to. That's awesome. So what about the, the student stuff that you're looking forward to? What is that? So we have, we support um, robotics teams who want to come to the show. So mm -hmm. we have worked with First Nevada and they're going to be bringing about eight of their first teams and they get to just demo, demo their robot. Like we'll have the competition, it's not the full competition floor, but we'll have some components from the competition and hearing how they came up with their ideas and interacting with them and, and, realizing half the time I personally, because I'm not an engineer, I don't really know sometimes what they're talking about, but mm -hmm. they're able to explain it in a way that I can understand and their reasoning behind things. So so that's, that's really a great thing. Um, my personal favorite part of the show takes place on Wednesday. It's called the Amazing Packaging Race. And that's when we have any student who attends the show can participate. They get put into teams and they go around the show floor and complete tasks at different exhibitor booths. So um, whether that's threading tape um, through a machine, whether that's shrink wrapping, um, they could even just have, you know, I think some of them are even doing like um, some cost saving analysis, problem solving. So it's a very exciting event. It brings a lot of excitement to the show floor. We have, you know, 75 students running around in different colored t-shirts. <laughs> Thousand dollars. I hear you. I hear static. One second. No, you're you're back now. Okay. <laughs> Gotta love technology. Jeez, that is awesome, though. That is such a great idea for any trade show. That that's so cool. It is so much fun. And um, it's just, we have 24 exhibitors participating in it, which is a record number for Vegas. And it's just, it's really great because as we all know, trade shows kind of dwindle the last day of the show. They're, they're not yeah. quite as busy. Everybody wants to go the first couple of days. So this brings that excitement and allows, um, it allows the students to not only complete the tasks, but engage with the companies and and talk about maybe potential job opportunities so, yeah. so that's also a way to engage them so is this the is this the first year you're doing that or how many no this you? is i believe the 12th year we're doing it oh so it's been around for a while it's, been and it's, around, like, it's grown it's definitely grown and morphed and um the, so it's kind of mimicking that show the great american yes Marriott. that's exactly what it was supposed to do 
And it's, it's great because we'll have students because, so we support a lot of schools to come to the show. Um, we mm -hmm. provide them booth space so they can promote um, their programs to companies and typically only juniors and seniors get to go to the show. Um, they're the ones who get to be selected. So sometimes I'll talk to some, some of the students and they're like, I've been hearing since my freshman year that this race is just the best thing to do. So they're talking about it when they go back to school. And that's just another way to keep the industry in the forefront of their minds. What a great idea. That's awesome. Man, I wish I could be there this year. It sounds like a blast. We'll, I'm we'll, going to, we'll do it next year, too. I'll have to go to next year's show. I'm going, for those tuning in, I'm going to FabTech, which is the same week in Chicago. So I have uh, colleagues that are going to Pact Expo. So I'm going to have to tell them about all the fun things that are going on with the students. Because um, uh, Jacob Sanchez is one of my colleagues, and he is really a huge advocate for FIRST Robotics, but also just getting the next generation really excited. And I don't think he knows about this amazing race, so he might be able to just like swing by and take some photos and stuff for y'all, but he, he would love seeing that and talking to the kids. So, well, this has been fun, Kate. Like I am so jealous I'm not going to the show this year, but- We will miss you. It sounds great. Yeah, it sounds great. And I really appreciate all the information you gave us about the PMMI, because. It's a great organization, and again, it's doing a lot to con connect communities with manufacturing opportunities and getting the next generation really excited about it. So before I let you go, I do want to ask you, if you had one ask for our audience today, what would that main ask be for you? Get involved at whatever level you can, um, whether you're a company make the time to go to the local schools. If you're a school, reach out to your local manufacturing companies and just make the time to create those connections. I think that's a great ask because I agree with you. People need to be more proactive in putting their boots to the ground and asking questions and volunteering their time. So if anybody has any more questions about the PMMI or if they want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that and where should they go? Uh, so our website, it's PMMI.org. If you want to connect with me directly, shoot me an email. It's pretty easy. It's Kate, K-A-T-E, at PMMI.org. And don't forget to Google PAC Expo 2023 and register for that show if you're going to be in Vegas. It's, as you can see on the bottom, it's September 11th through the 13th. So again, Kate, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone that tuned in, thank you. I hope you all have a great weekend, and I will see you next week for another episode of Mavis and Manufacturing. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Megan. This episode of Mavens has been sponsored by Fresh Horizons Group. Fresh Horizons Group is a family-run company that was founded on the premise of helping organizations and businesses better tell their story through high-quality branded apparel and promotional items. Freshen up your brand by contacting Fresh Horizons today at freshhorizonsgroup.com.